Hi everyone, it's Tawny. It is 2023. I almost said 2013 and I was like, oh my gosh, do not say it. Don't do it. Just don't go there. This is the first makeup tutorial I am filming in the new year. I have not filmed a makeup video, a makeup themed video in like a hot minute. A lot of my other videos have been vlogs and like getting ready for Christmas. Um, I planned a Christmas party with some family members. So I kind of walked you through like how I did the preparations for that and stuff. So if you want to check those out, they will be linked in the eye throughout the video. And I will try to put them in the description box, but I'm terrible with remembering to do that because I usually edit and then do the whole YouTube stuff like days after this happens. So chances of me remembering are not too great, but I'm gonna try. So today's video, we are going to be using products that I either have never used or products that I don't use very often. So this can be eyeshadow palettes, blushes, contours, mascaras, setting powders, things that I don't really reach for in my plethora of makeup. I have a five shelf, not including like the very tip top part, five shelf bookshelf that has all my makeup on it along with the desk like right here that has like my most loved favorites like my Natasha Denona Glam palette, uh, my Morphe Madison Beer palette, um, some good lip products I like. Uh, my Maybelline Superstay foundation is always on my desk here. It's like my go-to if I don't know what to use for the day. So we're going to start off with a um, primer. Excuse me if I forget some words and like the terminology of makeup because apparently like that happens to me if I don't film for a while I like forget everything I'm trying to get back into it and fall more in love with makeup like I used to be I think kind of the makeup community as a whole has like dwindled a good bit a lot of famous makeup influencers and makeup whatever you have them youtubers and such they've kind of like drifted away from makeup they don't really film makeup stuff too often like they kind of just reinvented themselves rebranded themselves into being more of like a lifestyle tech or youtuber or they do more like vlogging or they even do podcasts so it's kind of like a lot of the people that we used to watch have kind of just like floated away they just went a different route I'm clinging on for dear life, not so much as a creator, but more as like a viewer. I've been a fan of YouTube, makeup YouTube and whatnot since like 2015 or 16. Um, I got into videos when I asked my sister, like, do you know of any people I could watch on YouTube that would talk about makeup that can kind of give me some tips on like what I should be buying, what I should be using, how I should use it on my face. Like I felt like I was picking out products that were genuinely not working with me. And I feel like some products tend to just not work with anybody. They're just bad products. But then a lot of the time it's just, you don't know how to work with them. So I feel like finding YouTube helped me learn that and helped me understand that like, it's not you, it's the makeup sometimes. So I wanted to re introduce myself into that kind of a thing, get back into the love of makeup, what I like doing with makeup. And I found that like, I'm not the type of person to go out and like, let's try out all the new makeup because I don't have the money to be doing that. And I wish I could be that type of YouTuber because I love those type of videos where you test out new things, you talk about the new stuff, what to get, what not to get, what you should get instead of this. But I just don't have the money to be able to do that. So I'd like to try and delve into more of my collection that I have here at my apartment and just kind of use what I have, see what I can do with it, recreate different looks, go with different themes like my Animal Crossing series and just go from there. So if you have any suggestions, let me know in the comment section down below. If not, we're going to get started. Um, first things first, we have a primer. I've never used this. It's the No Pore Blum Prime Essence um, by Touch and Soul. I was trying to read more of it, but I think some of it's in a different language. It looks like this. I got this for my sister, so I have never touched this. I don't know what to expect from it. I don't know. Oh, what is this? Prime Essence? I was like, it's coming out like, what? I'm a little confused. Um, Maybe we're going to put this on and then do another primer because I don't know what this is going to do, but... <laughs> I don't know. We'll go here first and then branch off into something else, I guess. And yeah, I've never heard of a primer essence before or at least never used one. So I'm kind of intrigued, but at the same time, I'm like, but what, what does it do? What's the, what's the point? Is it going to do anything? Like that's kind of the question with a lot of primers in general for people that are like 
they don't believe in primers or they don't use primers. Not that they don't believe in them, they just don't use them. That like, do they even do anything? Do they even work? So yeah, so the next thing we're going to use, I'm gonna do another primer, just because I'm not totally sure what the F that primer is gonna do. To me, it's just a little bit of water and oil and a tube that you're just gonna smother on your face. So I don't see anything happening. My face is a little bit shinier because there is something on my face and I like haven't done my makeup in a while, but I don't know. We'll see. Next up is the Maybelline Master Prime Primer. It's the hydrate version. I'm going to go ahead and put just a little bit of this on my face as well. I haven't used this in a while and I feel like I might declutter this, honestly. I don't know why I ever held on to it as long as I have because it's not like it does anything for me. Like, I'm not like, oh my gosh, that primer, I have to use it. Like, it's the best thing ever. It's just kind of like one that sits in there. And I think I've just kept it because I didn't want to get rid of it. But I'm at the point now that like, I think I should get rid of it. And it has like a weird smell to it. And I don't know if it's because it's old or if it's just like a primer smell, but I think it's because it's old because I haven't smelled this primer smell like this. Like, I remember it had a different smell. And this smell is a very like woodsy, like it smells like wood, if that makes any sense. Like if you know what I'm talking about, you're like, oh yeah, that smell. Yeah, so I think I might be decluttering this one. So we'll put that aside. Okay, next up we have foundation. Okay, the foundation that we're going with is the Milani Conceal and Perfect 2-in-1 Foundation and Concealer in the shade 01 Creamy Vanilla. I have not used this foundation in like forever. And I've also had this foundation for forever. Am I literally out or did I just break the pump? What? What? Maybe we only get like three quarters of a pump because this is literally not, it should not be clicking. Yeah, it should not be clicking like that. And it feels like there's something in it, but I think it's it's a glass bottle, so I'm not quite sure if it's like feeling that way because it's a glass bottle or if it's because there's product in it. But this is what we have to work with. If not, I'll go back in with another foundation. But this one is supposed to be like extremely full coverage at the time that I bought this when it was popular, like 2016 or 17. But I think it came out before that. But that's just whenever I was like on YouTube watching at the time. And yeah, this might be able to stretch, but I'm not sure. I think this is the right shade. So when I used to, oh my gosh, look at this. Um, it might not be the right shade. I thought they had a good shade range in this brand or in this foundation, but now I'm kind of wondering, do they really? Um, when I first put on makeup and first started doing makeup, I thought I was JLo. Like I, when Tati said that she does this, I was like, oh my gosh, that's me. I literally looked at foundations and I was like, I'm tan. This is my, like, I would look at this and be like, oh my gosh, this fits me perfectly. I'm tan. Like, it was like, I wanted to be tan, but I wasn't actually. But in my mind, I thought I was. It's weird. I don't know how to explain it any other way than that. So I would get shades that were like two or three times darker than me, like light medium. That's pretty much what I would go with. And I'm more like fair light, usually fair. Like I'm one of like the lowest shades on the shade range. But in my mind, I would go super, super, super dark because I thought it would look nice. And I never really had the whole like line under my jaw kind of a thing. I usually blended mine in fairly well, but it just was not the right shade and I didn't quite get, I didn't quite understand that. So I'm, I've gotten better at that. I don't want to say I'm working on it because I feel like I'm like fine with it. I don't notice any problem with me shade matching, as I say, as I put on this like super yellow, not really a good shade match for me shade. Um, I've been thinking about getting another one of these, but I wasn't sure what my shade was. Like I wanted to just buy the same one again, but after doing this, I don't think I'm going to be doing that because I don't think this shade is my shade. So I've applied it. I have just a little bit left on my hand. So I'm kind of surprised that it like covered it like went that far I feel like some people do like a big pump and it's a full coverage and they do like one tiny little dot and they go dot 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 and it covers their face I feel like that one pump 
barely gets my whole like gets me all over you know what I mean and I don't know if it's just that like I don't apply it the right way or whatever but like I just don't feel like that one pump is enough to like completely cover everything and then go beyond that like that's just not no I don't think that way um I like the way the foundation is sitting on my skin it's a little drying like right in my cheeks but my cheeks have been having some texture issues where they've been really dry so I think it's just kind of collecting in that area but once I like wear some more makeup com continue with my skincare like it'll be fine it's just this time of year is so dry and my skin just like clings to it and like I have oily skin but any weird places where I could get dry skin I like get it really badly like I'll have like an oily greasy nose and then have like dry patches on my cheeks and my forehead like it's just it's weird um I do think the shade kind of works but at the same time like and I'm not tan in the slightest right now so maybe it's like a summer shade but for right now it doesn't work but like there is like from here I kind of can see a little bit of a difference but at the same time I do think it kind of blends in okay but like looking dead on like in this area like my forehead and my nose I notice that it looks different and I think it's just because it's more yellowy and a yellowy foundation is not for me like I always know that I have to go more pinky toned so yeah I think I'll try out a different shade if I get this again I've been thinking about trying out a couple different foundations like from the past and getting them again and seeing if they work but I haven't taken the step to do it because I'm just kind of nervous because one of them I had like a breakout reaction to so I'm like afraid of trying it again like what if something happens so for concealer I'm going to use the ordinary concealer high coverage formula I have the shade um 1.1p fair with pink undertones i we're gonna give it a shot i'm gonna put some on the back of my hand and then we will i guess dab it on my face and go from here i don't use products like this much so whenever i have to my brain just like can't function i guess so i'm gonna take just a little bit this is high coverage so it says i shouldn't need too much and I've been working on only putting product where I know I need it. Like when you see YouTubers and makeup people in general do the triangle, do you really need concealer all the way down here? Like I've noticed when people do their eyeshadow first and nothing against people who do their eyeshadow first. I did that whole glob and I need nothing. Like this is, this covers and I still have like the whole glob left. But they will do their makeup, like their under eye stuff, to the point that they can't block out the blackness of the dark circles under their eyes. So it literally looks like they're just putting concealer here and then they have the dark circle and then they have their eyeshadow. And I think it looks so bad and they don't, either they don't realize it or they don't know what to do to fix it or they just don't fix it. I don't know. Sometimes ignorance is what people choose to do because it's easier than coming, getting to the problem, the root of the problem or whatever. Um, but... So it's a little bit of a weird color. It's definitely pink. Like this little daub right here looks incredibly peachy to me in the camera. This down here looks more yellow. So I don't know, like in the mirror, I mean. The camera's not coming, not picking it up quite as well, but I'm hoping that it kind of blends out decently. It says fair, and that's the shade that I should be going with. Forehead looks okay so far, but sometimes like it just doesn't get executed quite well like the Milani shade is creamy vanilla and it shows up like yellow and it's not a good match for me vanilla is basically white like porcelain and then vanilla and that should be the order they go in like this is like it looks more like French vanilla to me you know so I think that's always been a problem in the makeup community is whenever brands tend to name their products weird like a lot of darker shades for people who have like a they have black skin or brown complexion or whatever they're more on the deeper side they tend to get names like chestnut walnut and things like and like hazelnut but they can be varying between the different brands and they're not like true to like the actual nut themselves or whatever so whenever people go looking for a foundation they'll be like oh I'm chestnut and chestnut could be this shade of brown or it could be this shade of brown and one is dark and one is light and there's like such a variation between it and I don't think brands quite realize that like it's harmful when they do that and I don't want to say like it's like offensive to people it could be I don't know I'm not like claiming that it is 
but it just makes it hard to shop. And I've noticed that on my end of the spectrum with like the fair to light products is that sometimes when they name them, they give them names that can be misleading. Like porcelain to me should be like as white as white can get. And sometimes porcelain is like this shade and it's just like, it does not, it's not executed the right way to make it easy for everyone to use properly and the way it was intended. So with the concealer on, I really like the coverage it gives under my eyes. It's definitely very brightening. And I feel like the concealer and the foundation work well together because the foundation, with it being a little bit more yellow toned and a little bit like deeper of a shade that I'm used to, not like it's like that deep, you know, but it's deeper than what I'm used to using. I feel like the concealer definitely like brightens up the areas a good bit where I need it to be. So that definitely helps me out a lot for setting powder. We are going to be using the Maybelline Lasting Fix Banana Powder. Now, I don't know if I'm going to need it, but with this being kind of yellowish, we're going to go in and see if we can kind of like yellow up this. And then I might go in with like a regular powder to cover the rest of my face just to set it down. Because with this being a full coverage foundation, I kind of want to set my makeup a little bit more. I've heard good and bad things about this um, powder. I saw a bunch of Instagram videos that Makeup Revolution did with their banana powder. And it was like, right, it was like using this yellow on my colored face, but you could see all of the banana powder. Like they were marketing it for like people with darker complexions, but it looked so bad on every single model they used. Every person that made a video about it, it looked horrible on. In the comment sections, people were like, we're trying to be polite about this to not offend anybody. But literally the video itself is offensive that like this is not working the way it was intended to be like used. And it was just so bad. And it was like, who in their right mind thinks that this is acceptable like to put out there? And I never saw anything like that with this powder. I've seen very good things about this powder. Um, I'm definitely looking mattified. And I know that this foundation tends to be more on the matte side. I don't know so much about the concealer. But I definitely feel like my nose is incredibly dry. Which it tends to be like this time of year. Especially with the weather and stuff outside. But I'm not quite liking... Like my under eyes just look kind of bland. So I don't know. I We need to fix this, but I'm not quite sure how we're going to fix this. Oh, I know exactly what we're going to do. Okay, for the next step, I am going to contour. And I do not contour normally, but I have seen a lot of videos about how to contour, the way contour can change the shape of your face. And I kind of want to try it and just see, like, would the new technique really help me out anymore? So I have the ABH Contour Kit in light to medium in the powder type. I only ever use powder. I'm probably like, I would probably do okay with a cream contour and whatnot, but I just prefer powder. I've always preferred powder over cream. Um, I'm going to go in with the lightest shade, which is kind of an, a pinkish shade. And I'm just going to put that all over the face and just kind of use that to set down the makeup, make myself more mattified, you know, like really F it up a little bit more than what we already have it as. <sighs> Not sure if it's one of the primers or if it's the foundation, but like my pores here, you can see them from this far away. And this is not a very good camera, but they are incredibly huge right now. And I'm sure that they're big like that without makeup on. So it's not like I can like say it's all the makeup's fault, but I just feel like my face is like one flake away from just like poof. Like I feel like I'm about to blip like they did an end game. Um, so I'm gonna go in with a stippling brush because I found that this works best when I'm trying to do a lighter coverage application. And I'm going to go in with the middle shade in the bottom row, which is a more dull kind of um, cool tone shade. And I'm just going to put that right below where I usually bronze. And then I'm just going to blend it out. So you can see it's kind of like tucked in right where my uh, cheekbones end. So when I do that, you can kind of see it right there. I see videos with girls who have more of a round face, and I'm not sure if I have a round face or not. I have a really hard time figuring out what my face shape is because when you do those like um, different like skins that you can use, like on Snapchat and whatnot, the filters, 
it like goes through and I feel like half of them fit my face. So I'm like, am I oval? Am I like, you know, octagon or whatever, where I have like multiple like hexagon or what have you, or am I round? I know I'm not like rectangular or heart shaped because I know that those just don't work for me, but I'm not totally sure what shape my face is. So if you are into that sort of thing and you can tell me, I would love to know. Maybe I'm oval. That kind of seems because I do have a more like my chin slash jaw kind of goes down a little bit. It's not like tucked into itself, but like where my features are, I feel like I'm very round. Okay, now that we have the sides of the face contoured out, it's not quite as strong as I would like, but I feel like this looks okay for now. I don't like hate, uh, no, no, no. we're gonna go in. I have the uh, Morphe Jaclyn Hill JH08 brush. It looks like this. I'm gonna go in to that contour shade and just kind of like contour a little bit more harshly, I guess, because I really want this to show up, but at the same time, it's coming off very gray. And I think that's probably the intention. That's what you want your contour to be is more gray than like a reddish orange compared to like a bronzer. But at the same time, I'm kind of alarmed that like, am I gonna be able to make this work? Like, I feel like I'm doing makeup for Halloween. So I'm a little like, mm, that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to stay more natural looking, more human looking. Uh, we're going to go into the nose and we're going to contour the nose. And I'm going to go in with that same shade with a, I have a blending brush for my eyes, but I found that these work really well at contouring the nose. So I'm just going to run this along just inside where I would assume the contour would go. And then we're going to blend it out, like down the sides of the nose to hopefully create a slimmer looking nose. Okay, it's not great, but I don't hate it. So we've contoured it a little bit. I still feel like my nose looks normal, maybe a little bit bigger. With the contour. I don't know. Maybe it's because I just procked on my face. Now I was drawing my attention right to the center of it. So I'm going to wipe off this brush that we used and I'm going to go in to the lightest shade in here, really pack it on the brush, and then I'm going to go down the center and try and highlight it a little bit. So it kind of like brightens that inner side up a little bit. Okay, how do we feel now? I totally did the contour thing and now I'm like self-conscious about my nose. Now we're gonna go in and bronze up the face and I'm gonna continue to use the contour kit and I'm gonna go with the shade on the far left, this shade. I use this one to contour and this one to bronze. So I'm gonna go in with that shade, just go a little bit above where I put the contour right there and I'm just gonna kind of go over it with the bronzer. Okay, I have some thoughts. From far away, it doesn't look too bad. Up close, right here, looks incredibly red. And I know that that brush did not have blush on it. So I'm kind of alarmed that this is picking up like pinky red. Like it looks identical in the mirror as it does in the camera. So I don't like how that looks. The bronzer on my forehead, great, looks fine. My nose is like getting there. I'm still a little like, mm, did I like F it up a little bit? <laughs> I have issues with my nose in general, so I feel like I'm just like nitpicky a little bit harder on my nose than like other parts of my body, but that's just like, that's just what I do. This side doesn't look too bad. It looks okay. I don't know that I really like, I don't know, maybe if I use a different contour kit product, palette, what have you, I might feel differently, but I don't know. This just isn't like doing it for me like I thought it would, and I'm kind of like sad about it like I thought it I thought it would like I thought it would like make me feel like a true 2016 influencer but look like a 2023 YouTube influencer 
The blush we're going to use today is one that I use every so often. It's not one I pick up all the time. It's not one I'm like, oh my gosh, let's reach for it. It's not one that I ever am like, I'm dying to use this product. It's just one that like, sometimes I'll grab it and be like, oh, that's the one we're using today. It's the Essence Satin Touch Blush in the shade Satin Coral number 10. I don't hate it. I feel like this shade, it looks more orange and the camera than it does in person. Like sometimes when I look at it, like especially through the product, it looks very like dusty rose and I hate that. That's not for me. Um, we're gonna go ahead and try this today. We can't possibly screw up the look any more than we already have because between the bronzer and the contour, it's just not, I mean, maybe the, the problem with the makeup was when we started off with the primer serum thing. Maybe that's where the makeup went wrong. Maybe it was whenever I clicked start on the video. Um, but okay, that doesn't look too bad. I like the way that it like pops. It's like a pinky coral and it definitely is giving me a little bit of glow on my cheeks, but not enough of one that like I don't need a highlighter. Like I want to use a highlighter. So we're going to use a highlighter. I like this blush and I can see myself using it more often. I should probably look to see if they have more blushes like this to see if there's other shades I might like better or might want to try out. I don't know. Do you guys like the Essence blushes? I know they have like a wide variety of them, but I never know if they're like good or not. So yeah, let me know what you think. For our highlighter, I was debating between two, but I think I'm going to go with this one. It is the Milani Strobe Light Highlighter in Afterglow. It is the number one. They have like four, I believe, of these. Um, Milani used to be the brand for me back in the day. Like when I first got into YouTube, everybody was talking about those six pan eyeshadow palettes that were like the big thing. And my CVS at the time had a really nice end cap with Milani. They'd get lots of new stuff. They would keep it well stocked. And they always had a buy one, get one half off or buy one, get one free on anything Milani. So I could get two eyeshadow palettes for the price of one, or it would be like 20 bucks for two of them kind of a thing. So it wasn't like it was like super super cheap but it was a good deal enough that it was like worth going after i used to use this all the time it was like my go-to highlighter when i first got into makeup because it was like one of the ones that was like really poppy like look at that it's so pretty but like it never does anything for me that makes me excited to use it and i don't know if it's the like the packaging i like the way that it looks kind of like like sand and like the beach and stuff but there's just something about it that's just not like oh my gosh, let's use this product. Like, I don't know what it is. And Milani, it's not like Milani is a brand that I'm like, oh, it's Milani. Like, I don't feel that way about Milani. Honestly, I like Milani, but it just, I don't know. It's just not, and like, I prefer this, this highlighter over their baked highlighters. So I'm going to do my brows and my eye base, my eyeshadow base off camera. And then we'll be back to film the rest of the video. Okay, so we are back and we are using a palette that I've never touched before. It's, if I can remember, I've never touched it. I picked this up for Halloween either last year or the year before and never did anything with it. I got a really good deal on it, so I picked it up. I think I was at Ulta when I got it because this isn't the type of website I would normally get like a lot of stuff from. I don't think I really like, I stopped shopping from this website and from this brand quite a bit because I just wasn't really interested in them. I felt like they were just constantly pushing the same products over and over and over again, different prices, different deals, what have you. Then they would have an influencer brand that was, or an influencer launch with like a couple products. And I was just like, okay, you're not doing anything for me. Like this isn't pushing me to like the brand anymore. So I just kind of gave up on them. Um, it's BH Cosmetics. This is the Absinthe palette. Uh, it says Poison Shock. This was part of their Halloween collection last year, the year before. I don't, quite remember I think I have used this palette because you can see a little bit of like move like there's something here and something right here where I look like I've used them but I legit have no recollection of this so we're gonna go ahead and do it because why not do a green look in the middle of the second day of January right um BH Cosmetics is just one of those brands that I just don't really feel inspired when I look at their products. I'm using Unleashed Spirit and I'm gonna put that in the inner crease and blend it up and outward. Um, they typically release a lot of the same types of products. Their eyeshadow formula is not bad. I don't think it's like the worst one on the market compared to Makeup Revolution, if you ask me, but it's definitely like they do the same products over and over and over again. 
And I think a lot of their makeup influencer launches and stuff, like, they did one with Iggy Azalea, and I wanted to support it, but it was just, it didn't really do anything for me to make me want to try it and be like, oh my gosh, I have to try this. Like, I love Iggy. Like, I wanted to support Iggy and, like, her doing something with makeup, but the products were just so, ugh, that I just, like, even on sale, I didn't even reach for them. Like, I didn't even want to try. And I felt bad, but then they came out with the Doja Cat release. And I'm not a Doja Cat fan in general. Like, And her makeup release with BH Cosmetics, there was nothing to it that was special. The brushes, I wanted to like them, but they just, like, the gold and the pink looked so tacky that I just, like, I just thought it was just so, like, cheap. Like, it's something that, like, if you're a 10-year-old and you love Doja Cat and you want to try some makeup, you go ahead and get those eyeshadow, those, bl those brushes and the eyeshadow palettes and whatever was with the collection. You go right ahead. If you're 14 and you want to try makeup, that's kind of the route you would go. But for me, a 27-year-old now who wants good quality makeup, I'm going to steer clear of it. It's just not, it's not something I want to go into. This would have been a great look to save for St. Patrick's Day. So now that we did Unleash Spirit, we're going to go in with Blackout, which is funny because it's not black. It's like a dark brown shade or dark green shade. And I'm going to put that in the inner corner. And then I'm also going to put it on the lower lash line to kind of make the look a little bit more cohesive. I also think I might switch it up. I'm kind of like leaning in a different, ooh, do we want to try something else? Yeah, we're going to try it. I'm going to go in with Blackout in the inner corner and kind of do a cut, no, not a cut crease. We're going to do uh, wherever you put like the the shiny color, the metallic glitter, shimmer, whatever in the middle. There's a word for it. It's not coming to my mind, but we're going to do that and we're going to spice it up a little bit because I'm feeling inspired today. I don't usually get that way, but I'm feeling inspired. So we're going to run black out all under the under under uh, lash line. We're just going to run it right on the bottom part here, whatever this part of the eye is called, the eye bag. We're going to run it under and around. I don't really like how this is turning out on the inside of my eye, but I think it's just going to happen because of where I put the green. We're just going to we're just going to get green everywhere. So we're going to recreate that on the left eye. Your right, maybe your left, I don't know, but it's my left. And then we're going to do the same on the inner corner of that eye. Okay, so now we have the eyes matching. We are going to I think I'm going to go in with a brush. I don't really want to get my finger too dirty. <laughs> I feel, I don't know. Usually this brush, it's the um, Makeup, yeah, Makeup Academy Professionals Crease Brush, the 315. I picked this up like a really long time ago when CVS used to sell MUA products on an end cap. They've since remodeled that entire area and MUA is now gone from CVS. So if I ever lose, break, or ruin this brush, I... I am S-E-R-E-W-E-D, and I need to find a new one. I'm pretty sure I could find one from like Morphe or Sigma or some other makeup brand, but I like this one so much that I don't want to replace it. But I, I know I probably should just for hygienic reasons, but at the same time, for nostalgic reasons, I'm going to hold on to it and use it as a wand and draw my Disney Channel head thing. Um, we're going to go in with Elixir. Ooh, that's a really punchy, punchy, shimmery glitter thing. And we're going to just tap that right in the middle of my eye and go up into the crease area because it's going to happen whether or not I put it there or not just the way my eye folds work and we're going to then like blend it out a little bit so it's not quite as like chunky in one spot it looks like it's getting all over the eye and I don't care it's going to do that my eyes have a mind of their own and I just work with them I work alongside them I don't try to lead them because it never ends up the way I want it to, and I just end up disappointed later on. Ooh, this is so pretty. It's like giving me like fairy tale vibes. Like I just feel like I could be like Tinkerbell or Fiona and jump in the swamp with Shrek 
with this cute little eye look. I really like this. So we're going to go in. I kind of want to do something in like the inner corner, but like when you darken your inner corner, it kind of doesn't call for a brightener shade, like a brighten shade. So we're going to go in with Green Fairy on the bottom lash line. I just really wanted to use this shade, so we're going to find a way to use it. So we're going to put it just in like we're down from where we put that previous shade, uh, Elixir. I cannot see to, I am not, I'm struggling. Okay, I really like the way this looks. I think this turned out really well. I'm really liking it. Now my brush is gonna be staying green, but it's fine. Um, I actually really like this palette. I think the glitter shimmer things apply really well. The matte shades are just average. I don't think they're special, but I don't think they're terrible. But I actually really like the way this turned out. So for setting spray, we're gonna go on setting spray, then we're gonna go into mascara. Um, let's see, which one do I not use too much? One that I don't use hardly at all is this Maybelline Glass Spray. Uh, makeup finishing spray, skin looks hydrated, dewy finish. Well, I put all these dewy primers and whatnot on my face, but I also then put a full coverage concealer and concealer slash foundation on my face. So why don't we just kind of let them all mesh and like make my skin look better? I use this typically if I want to wet a brush or if I want to wet a sponge and then tap it into my skin. I don't ever really use this as a setting spray. So I don't literally like I don't even know if it's going to like look good. I don't really know what it looks like on the face. I wish it looked the way I want a glass look like the glass skin look to look. But I'm not really sure it does that because people would have been hopping on the train for this like whenever it came out a couple years ago and nobody really has. So we're going to see if it needs to be if it's a train we need to jump on it smells good i like it it's definitely like a fruity smell but not like a disgusting fruity smell it's very pleasant i really like it um okay we're gonna blend it in with this beauty blender maybe it'll help us make the look look a little bit better um i mean i don't have anything negative to say about it it, setting spray and primers are one of those things unless they have some like magical claim to them they're really hard to judge because it's like they either screw up your makeup or they make your makeup look better there's no like um so far it looks okay my mustache area I don't shave it I don't have a problem there with having to shave it but it looks a little dry for mascara we're going to go in with the Pat McGrath Labs Fetish Eyes Mascara um can't really tell what it looks like um, I picked this up thinking it was a different Pat McGrath mascara that Kathleen Lights recommended, and it was not. And I've just been having to live with that since then. <laughs> um, I have not really used this much. I have a couple different mascaras I could have picked from, but I wanted to go with this one because I really wanted to see, do I like it or not? So I know that I can get rid of it if I don't like it, or I can push it toward the top if I do like it. So far, it's applying okay. The brush is a little bit thick, like the product is thick on the brush, so it makes it hard to like work the bristles through my lashes. Words are not coming out right, like I told you all. <laughs> they wouldn't. And it's making my lashes kind of clump together where I have to put more effort to fix it myself. And that to me is a problem with a mascara is when it makes you do more work to make it work than what it should because it can't work properly. And that irks me because it's like, don't make me put forth more effort because that effort is gonna be used to put you in the trash and not to fix the product on my eyes. It's not really doing anything for my lower lash lines, lower lashes. Um, it's giving it a little bit of color, but really doing nothing. So I'm kind of disappointed. I don't really think this is a good mascara. I will probably be decluttering this because I'm just not really like happy with the results of this. Like I know what I like and this is just not it. It works okay. Like if you just need an okay mascara and you happen to stumble upon some Pat McGrath or wherever, go ahead, pick it up, deal with it. But to me, it's just not like this amazing mascara. The second coat does better, but, like, I still have to pick through my lashes and, like, separate them. Like, I want more than, like, three or four lashes on my eyes. I want, like, a bunch. Like, I don't... It's okay. It's just nothing special. Like, 
It's not what we expect Pat McGrath to come out with, if you ask me. So for lips, I'm going to be using this Wet n Wild Liquid Cat Suit High Shine Lipstick in the shade Send Nudes. I don't believe I've used this hardly at all since I got it. And I had so many lip glosses and lipsticks I could have picked from. That and mascaras are like the two things that like I kind of just use what I like because I know what I like. And I don't really want to switch it up and then end up using something that I'm going to hate. But I've liked this formula in the past. Like the regular one, the original one that came out was very nude and mattifying. Well, it was mattifying, not nude. And I really like those, but they're a little bit too drying. And I usually like it, but at the same time, I'm just not really like, not always looking for that. So this shade is really nice. It's very nice for the look we went with. Like I don't want anything that's gonna like steal away the look of the eyes or make the eyes look weird in comparison. Like I don't want red lips and green eyes like it's after Christmas we're not doing a Christmas look now um it's applying well it's a little bit like more see-through than I was hoping I wanted something a little bit more like you kind of forget your lips are there here's the product but it's not like it's not like it's nothing like it's like almost there it's like right like a smidge away from being that so I don't like I don't hate it in that way um, I think the formula, it's very thick, but it's not like, it's not goopy. Like if it's goopy, it's just not, it's trash. But I don't hate this. Like I actually like it. And I think I could be using this more often, which that's the whole point of going through your collection and using up makeup that you have that you haven't touched in a while or haven't ever used is to see what you like and to kind of push things further up in the rotation so that you have things to use that you just have kept hidden in the back of the drawer, in the back of the cabinet, in the back of the shelf, tucked away on your desk, whatever it is, you you use them now. You get your money's worth out of the product. Um, this is a finished look. Other, I think, okay, um, I think the primer serum was a waste of money. Glad I didn't pay for it. I think my sister got it through like a BoxyCharm type thing, so she wouldn't have paid much money for it. I'm hoping she didn't buy it because it's trash. I think it's kind of lame. The other Maybelline primer I think is okay. It's not really doing anything for me. Like I felt like the foundation kind of like over it a little too much that it like inhibited its ability to work. So I think I'm going to be tossing it just because it smelled kind of weird and it's just like I need to get rid of it anyway. The foundation I'm going to be getting rid of because it was acting weird and I also need to get a new one and it smelled a little funky. So we're just going to get rid of it in general. And I know that this foundation typically smells weird, but it smells a little more weird now. So we're really going to be getting rid of it. Um, concealer I liked. I will be using that more often. I feel like it worked really well. My under eyes don't look any different, worse, bad, but I like the way it brightened compared to that foundation. So I think for a little bit like darker shades that I have, more summer shades, I can use that to kind of brighten up some areas that I want more brightened. And it's also high coverage. So I'm going to be trying to use that more often. The banana powder I thought worked okay. It's nothing special. I feel like my under eyes are a little bit yellow, but nothing like horribly bad. I'm going to keep trying to use it, but it might be a product that I declutter in a couple months just from not using it. The contour palette from ABH I thought was just like, it, it just isn't what I thought it was. And it just doesn't do anything for me. Like I need it to, like I want it to, like I thought it would. So I just think I'm going to keep it, but I'm just not really going to use it which is what I've been doing with it since I got it. Like I used it a good bit when I got it because I was so excited to have an ABH product. And then it just kind of like contouring just became a thing I didn't like to do. I just like bronzer. I don't like, I feel like I want to use a contour because I like the way it sculpts your face. And I feel like I need that just in my mind. I think I need that. But I prefer the way bronzer looks on me just in general. Like I like the sunniness of the bronzer. So to me, that's what I'm going to reach for more than a con or more than a contour. The blush I'm going to use more often because I feel like it's really nice and it's really flattering on my skin. So I'm going to try and use that more often and try and make myself more excited to use it. The highlighter I really like. It's one I've always liked. I've just never been like super excited to use it. So I think I just need to reach back into the back of that drawer and get it out and use it more often. Um, the eyeshadow palette is clearly the winner here. This is like such a pretty look and I'm definitely going to be doing this more often because I feel like green with this black shirt goes really well. And I feel like it's a shade that like I can use, even though it's not like a neutral shade, it's a little bit out there, but it's still so pretty and it really complements my blue eyes really well. Like they're not 
they're blue sort of leading green, but more like more leaning gray of a blue. But I feel like it really makes my blue eyes like pop in a way that like neutrals don't really do. So this could be something that I could do to switch out my looks or wear with like if I have a green outfit to do for the day. The mascara is okay. I'm liking it more against this green eyeshadow, but at the same time, I'm just not really like overly thrilled with it. So it's one I could see myself decluttering in the future. I'm going to hold on to it for a while just to see how I feel and then go from there. But it's probably one that just won't get used a whole lot. The setting spray didn't really do anything good or bad. I don't notice my skin more hydrated. I don't notice it more mattified. And it said it was more hydrating and like dewy, but I don't really see my face looking too dewy. So I'm just going to keep using that as like a setting spray for like um, glitters and shimmers and whatnot to make them pop on my eyes because anything with like a liquid tends to do that to an eyeshadow. So I'm going to try and just use that that way more and just keep up with that because I just don't think as a setting powder it really does anything for me and then the lipstick I'm going to keep using but I think I'm going to go with like something underneath of it just to kind of blend like bring it out a little bit more because like it's just very bland on my lips and I just feel like I need a little bit of a zhuzh to like pull it up a little more but yeah let me know what you guys think of this video if you want to see more videos like this or if you have any other products you want me to use uh you can put something in the comment section see if i have it and i can put it out there uh like share subscribe hit the notification bell so you get notified when i upload my next video stay tuned for that one guys and i'll see you then bye